Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you for inviting me. I'm honored. I, knew, I know very well your university, and the, even the founder is my friend, Dr. Shili. So, uh, and this, the question is very, very good. Also, very good is what you are trying to do here. Uh, not to hear lectures, but to be interactive with us. So the idea for SECEM, the everybody know what SECEM what second is and what SECEM means? Oh, <clears throat> we should have uh, shown you a film about SECEM, but SECEM is an initiative which started 30 years ago in Egypt. Before I lived for 25 years in Europe here, and then I visited my home country, uh, and I, I saw and experienced uh, the underdeveloped countries, how they are living, and compared to Europe. So I started thinking, and uh, after three years, I had a, a vision. Uh, and how ideas come up, Perhaps I should tell you that uh, you can't go to a good idea when you are not in a, in a process of thinking. Thinking means uh, bringing the element of the life together to understand what does mean, what is, what is the meaning of life. And uh, so uh, after a while I got an ideal a idea about how we can develop uh, underdeveloped countries. To put example on that, uh, and how we can maintain it, make it sustainable, not just to to start enterprise, but how we can help people to raise their consciousness, because you cannot do the good without having understand the life and the circumstances around you. So how we raise the consciousness that is only through building. Building is the German grasp, and I hope that everybody understand it. That means uh, education, that means health, that means research. Uh, but if you want to do all of that, you need also to work and to involve the whole society. So the idea started like that. We start with uh, biodynamic agriculture in the desert. Uh, now we have about 800 farms around the country from uh, the very north to the south and to the, in the oasis where the people have learned how to grow crops that is medicinal plant, uh, vegetable and fruits and cotton how to grow it biodynamically. And out of this raw materials, we are processing pharmaceutical products, uh, phytotherapy, and food, organic food, which we uh, export in all over the world and also in the local market. And, uh, it happens that in uh, 1992, we discovered that we have a lot of pesticides in, in our uh, organic material uh, because the government uh, dusting 35,000 ton of pesticides over the cotton yearly. Um, and so the research started with the government how we can uh, stop it, how we can make alternative for that organic alternative. And after two attempts, two trials, we succeeded to have organic way of growing cotton. And so we, uh, we called for the first organic cotton conference in the world. And uh, at that time, the government stopped this testing and adapt the new method of uh, organic cotton. That is now very well known around the world, in India and in the United States and everywhere people are now growing cotton without pesticides. Uh, that was the revolutionary act in, in Egypt. But 
not only in Egypt, but around the world. Then we discovered that when we have this wonderful fibers of cotton, people are adding another 200 chemicals on that to weave it and to spin it and to make clothes out of it. So another research period started also to replace all the chemicals through um, organic, through natural material. And so we, uh, we started the business of organic clothing. I, I don't know whether you know it or not, uh, but um, in DM Markt, in Egypt, uh, here in, in Germany, and in uh, Alnatura Markt, uh, those products are very available. So we are exporting to the United States and to Europe the organic clothes, for, especially for kids, for children. So we have all these uh, three uh, parts of, uh, of economy uh, based on the organic raw material. And that allowed us from the first beginning to establish a foundation. Because to build a living organization, people had to work and to learn. And this foundation started training the people who are working in, uh, in the different, uh, uh, different companies. Now we have about nine companies in, in Egypt where uh, 2,000 people are in the processing uh, facilities and many other thousands are in the fields of uh, growing the raw materials. And those, must, the people must be trained to do their work properly and to raise their consciousness. So that is the work of the foundation, and that foundation started also uh, kindergarten schools from primary to matrix to abitur, and a school for disabled children, and another vocational training center where we train the young, the young people in several vocations, from started from carpentry and from organic agriculture to uh, electronic. And so in this um, foundation, in the, in the educational part of the foundation, we have about 600 kids who are learning, added to the 2,000 who are working. And then we have a medical center <coughs> that cares for the health of the worker, for the help of the children, and for the surrounding area. Around of Sekem in the, those 30 years, many small villages uh, is now established so that we are serving about 40,000 people yearly in, uh, in healthcare activities. So uh, um, we have also outreach programs to educate and train the people out, outside uh, the uh, second. And what is very, very important is this uh, second uh, academy for art, science, and technology. That was from the first beginning also established through the foundation where we uh, do interdisciplinary research, consortium research also people from different disciplines are working together to uh, innovate new products, new ideas, even to innovate uh, contemporary art for the country. Um, that are the foundation that uh, serves the community. And we have another NGO, another for I, that cares for human rights. Uh, so we have to train people also what is their right. And we have to work together with the government. Uh, so this organization uh, is one of the, in the beginning now it is well known, but uh, the beginning was very, very uh, unpleasant work for all of them. 